So good morning, everyone. I am Francesco Labrese. I am a research manager in the IBM Research Lab here in Dublin. As probably many of you know, IBM decided to open a research lab in Ireland uh, roughly f a bit more than four years ago. And the main focus of our research is what we call smart cities, which is developing solutions that can help cities perform better by uh, new data analytics that uh, uh, can make use of the older data that already cities collect and then try to use them to uh, better um, provide services for their citizens. And uh, um, in this journey that we've taken, we have actually collaborated a lot with the city of Dublin as our uh, one of the, the use cases that we have for, uh, uh, from one side, collect a lot of information through Dublin and the other collaboration with the different department in the city, but also on the other side also to be able to have uh, a feedback from the uh, users in the city uh, department on whether the new research prototypes that we're building are actually of uh, real use for, uh, uh, for the city themselves. And what we thought today is to show you one example of uh, analytics that we have developed in the course of the last few years applied in the transportation scenario to give you an idea about how we go about from uh, raw data source that can be provided from the city to a tool that uh, can be used by a city official for better operation on transport uh, um, network. Uh, with the goal of this talk is to be able to give you also some lessons that we'll learn in terms of uh, uh, how we deal with the challenge of cleaning the data, making uh, sense out of the data, and also developing a solution that can be indeed useful for the city administration. So I'll give you now the ball to Yannis Dufas, who is a research engineer in our lab. He was one of the main developers of the solution. Thanks. Hi. So um, we're going to talk about the data-driven uh, decision-making in transportation and planning. Um, in this uh, area of uh, big data, as Francesco said, a lot, uh, more, uh, a lot more data are being produced every day, and it's, uh, a number of data sets are being available. But it's, uh, it's up to us to keep up and uh, pass, uh, be able to leverage on them and facilitate uh, in monitoring and planning in a city level this time. Um, the goal is uh, to empower the city operators uh, to take advantage of these uh, data sets and provide better uh, service to the citizens, like uh, most of you have talked already. Um, in the last decade, uh, a lot of uh, citywide sensory systems have been installed to various cities around the world, uh, major cities. Uh, our research focus in uh, the Dublin lab is uh, the SCAT system uh, in the city of Dublin. So SCATS uh, is uh, an intelligent uh, transportation system uh, which involves installing sensors on uh, intersections throughout the city. And uh, at any point in time, it reports uh, various uh, KPIs related to the traffic flow, like uh, saturation, flow, green time, etc. Uh, so the setup for Dublin involves uh, 550 intersections with uh, 3,300 sensors in total, and uh, the amount of data being generated are uh, approximately 150 megabytes uh, per hour. Uh, some of the historical data and some near, near real-time data uh, for this stream are available on the double link, uh, on these uh, links. Okay, so the, um, the goals of the SCATS analytics platform that we have built is uh, to leverage both the uh, data stream, the live data stream that we are collecting, and, and the historical data from the, from the sensors, from the SCATS uh, sensors. Um, we, we want to run analytics on the raw data and uh, on the same time provide insights uh, to the end user on real time. Uh, and this uh, has to be done in a way and presented in a comprehensive manner, uh, which is easily accessible to the city operator and uh, that anyone uh, can use and uh, gain insights from that. This is a very high level overview of uh, the, the architecture, how the system looks like. The real-time stream coming from the sensors is, is stored on the, on the database and uh, in an offline phase we perform analytics on those historical data and we train our models for each individual detector in the city uh, and then 
when the, the front end, the web application, connects directly to the, to the stream and taking advantage of the, those stream models that we had, uh, can in real time uh, detect anomalies, detect uh, trapping objection and uh, network, uh, network issues. So the challenges we faced uh, were a lot during uh, building, during the creation of this project. Uh, the input data that we had uh, were uh, uh, unfiltered and contained wrong entries most of the times. And we had to figure out uh, what was the problem in most of the cases. We'll see some extreme values being reported. And uh, of course, the, the large amount of data being produced uh, made it very challenging to perform analytics on them and to efficiently store them and curate uh, in our systems. Uh, also, the real-time KPIs, like uh, the detection of uh, traffic or uh, network-related issues, had to be extracted and reported in real time uh, because that, that was the only way that it would give the city operator uh, enough time to act and uh, make some decisions on the current situation. Um, Again, uh, the, it was uh, hard to create all this, to give all these complex analytics uh, bundled and uh, presented in a way that uh, the user would uh, understand and hide all this complexity, all these analytics, uh, and just present what is uh, useful to them. This is some of the um, internal uh, work that uh, our researchers have been doing. This just gives an idea of uh, how we perform the classification of uh, whether uh, an intersection is congested or not. Uh, I'm sure the traffic engineers would uh, recognize uh, uh, how, what this stands for. It's the degree of saturation in the x-axis and the y-axis is the flow of vehicles per hour. And uh, on the green is what we classify as a normal, uh, as a normal flow, free flow. Uh, the red ones are for the congestion, and uh, the yellow ones is in the medium state, uh, transition state. Um, details we can find uh, on the paper uh, here. So this is a screenshot of uh, the dashboard that we have created uh, for uh, DCC. Um, this is an overview of uh, Dublin and uh, with the appropriate uh, colors and dots for every intersection. It shows, uh, it gives an immediate um, uh, overview of what the city looks like in the current, uh, in the current time. With the red, of course, it's the, it's the intersection that are in, uh, having problems, and the green, of course, it's the free flow. Um, also, we report uh, possible, uh, possible sequences of intersections that could create uh, could be responsible for the creation of the congestion uh, with the orange lines on the dots here and in the city center. Here is what uh, the city operator uh, would, uh, would see in case uh, he wanted to drill down on uh, one specific intersection. So we give, his, uh, we give an overview of the uh, recent historical data uh, with various KPIs that uh, the city operator might, uh, could be interested in. And also, on each individual uh, detector of this, we output if the behavior is normal, if the queues are growing or are stable. And uh, uh, you can see the name of the street. And uh, also, here, uh, there is uh, an overall uh, um, uh, percentage of how many of the intersections are in free flow or they are congested. So you can immediately understand uh, how this uh, the total condition in the city looks like. Uh, you would see in uh, hours that nobody is using the network, it would be 99% of free flow, and uh, of course it would drop down on, uh, during rush hours. Uh, I wanted to show the, um, how it actually looks like uh, now. Uh, here is uh, the working uh, prototype that we have, so if we click on the, one of the intersections, we see immediately what does it look like. Uh, we can see, you can see that clearly how it starts to behave after, after the rush hours around uh, eight o'clock. And this system is deployed and available for uh, Dublin City Council. Okay. Okay, so now a brief uh, overview of uh, what we learned from uh, developing all these uh, analytics is that um, 
available open data are certainly uh, useful to be incorporated uh, in the process of uh, decision making uh, by city planners, city operators, uh, politicians. Um, but also, what is very crucial is that domain knowledge is absolutely necessary. If we didn't have our traffic, uh, uh, traffic engineers, traf traffic researchers, uh, we wouldn't be able to present uh, and uh, deploy all those complex analytics. Um, so we always looking for improving and uh, improving the quality and the availability of the data sources uh, out there. And uh, we are certain that this can only be beneficial for, for the city, its citizens, and it's a daily acti and it would be very beneficial, very beneficial for the everyday activities. Uh, also, uh, when we designed this platform, uh, we kept an eye on the end user, which was the city operator, and we had always uh, feedback, uh, continuous feedback with those, and that helped us a lot to develop uh, a useful and uh, uh, user-friendly uh, user and uh, something that he could understand and uh, work with. Uh, in the end, it was a, we believe it was a high-level user experience because they were happy about it. Uh, yep. That's it. Thank you.